All right. Hello. Welcome to week two of the Twin Towers podcast. I'm joined by my co host and beer wine insider aficionado, Mikey Blaze. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us last week, all 66 of you, unless somebody watched it twice. That's pretty good. Well, to keep it real, that was technically the lowest performing version of the Twin Snakes pod of all time. Oh, boy. But with that being said, it came up out of nowhere, to use the quote. Yeah. Um, And I think one of the caveats of what we said we were going to do is that we weren't going to give a fuck about that, right? So yeah, it's better than five. It's better than 10, better than 20, and so on and so forth. So, I mean, anyone who took the time, obviously, is shout outs. And, you know, I think the key is establishing some consistency across the board, which is this is looking good right now. We're rocking it out again for the second week in a row. And I thought it went well. I mean, the, the biggest issue ob- was the obvious that the camera fucking turned off in the middle of it. So Yeah, but the slideshow was great. The, well put together. The slideshow was nice. A nice little added effect. So I probably will be bouncing around a little bit just to make sure that that doesn't happen again so that we have the full video feed. But with that being said, I mean, what's going on with you? Anything exciting? Mm. <laughs> Not really. Nothing to report. We worked together last week, which was fun. I don't know. Have we? We've never worked together before. I never worked at Frankie. You worked at Willowbrook. That's true. We did work together at Willowbrook. I remember you said, like, I feel bad even taking a paycheck because it was so, like, there was nothing. Yeah, it was pretty dead there. The weirdest part about that job was, like, sometimes you'd be on, like, 10 to 10. So it'd just be an entire fucking day long of being there and... There wasn't always a shitload to do. The best part about that job was like taking the golf cart out and going for a spin because you could get away from the action. Like all the people in the kitchen and everything that was going on at home base, you could go out on the golf court and like go take boxes to the dumpster and kind of, you know, do what you needed to do. So good first job for a 14 year old. Fun experience. Little kitchen experience, little dishwashing experience. So yeah, on and so forth. And you did amazing at a, Thank you kindly. For a first day. What I wanted to try to do was not make it seamless, but I wanted to jump in and actually be helpful because a lot of times when someone's starting out at first, they're actually like a burden, right? Because you have to fucking hold right, their hand train. and train them and show them everything. So I it's didn't like, have to show you shit. Like you literally just knew which what is to do. You're what proactive. I wanted to do. I wanted to try and make it so that I was actually a, a plus to the to the crew and not a minus and i think it went really well it was fun kind of seeing you in that environment obviously eric was there too working the wedding so it had this like almost uh willowbrook type vibe to it on some level and um yeah it was really cool i'm excited to to do that again so um that was that was super cool um if you want to catch the twin towers live you can come to (laughs) becker farms this friday night the grateful dead is (laughs) <laughs> not playing but the grateful dead cover band is playing so yeah. by all means not come out fan of the band but... grab a murdoch ipa and let it ride we'll be there serving IPA. them up yeah man um so oh yeah get to the story there's a lot to talk about today we got the stanley cup we got other things on the agenda but there's an ominous floating ghastly vibe in the room right now because when Mike got here I was gonna say nothing and just drop it on him during the app but I couldn't hold I couldn't hold back I had to say something so I said just wait that's all I could tell him was just wait and obviously he wants to fucking know what's going on so let's just get into it um if you look around here you know this place is no, you're not moving out. Pretty special to me. There's a lot going on you're here. You're moving out? So today, uh, just for a little background, I've been here nine years. My mom has rented the lower apartment eight years. This has been the home for many trials and tribulations. Anyone who's been watching my videos on my channel will know how tumultuous and crazy this year has been. I'm just now getting back on my feet and starting to re-enter society and um, be proactive and things are going really well. I mean, everything is going so good. Today, I got a in-person visit from my landlord. Oh, God, dude. I almost assumed that what 
<laughs> I will cry. I got an in-person visit from my landlord, and what I was told is that the Spruce Street era of Codizzi is coming to a rapid end. That's really sad. In that meaning that this building is being sold to their son, who lives across the street. Beausoleil? Yep. Him and his girlfriend are taking over the building, and myself and my mom are to empty this place out in full by August 1st. What? Like... What? Yes. That's the story. That's what happened. Pack your shit. Pretty much. So... The surroundings that you see, the um, environment that we taped all the Twin Snakes pods, the environment that we've taped all our classic videos, um, where all the different things have happened over the years, we are entering the final month, and I am looking for a new place to live. You're gonna. It's gonna be hard. It's gonna be really hard. It's I mean, gonna be fucking damn near impossible until you, until you find a spot. You're not the first person who said that, and I and I want to say thank you first and foremost, and I also want to say that luckily I have amazing friends and family who I know would do anything for me in any type of situation, and so I'm not that worried about it. Um, what if you just went homeless? Like, that would be, like, fun. Like, you just did it as a bit. Yeah. I mean, the, the the thing about it that worries me is just the accumulation of stuff. There's a lot of shit. Yes. And it's not only what you see. It's also what you don't see in addition to the entire basement is full with my drums your, and... Your closet. My your closet, bathroom. both closets. I mean, it's, it's crazy. So, this has been home for almost a decade, and... Um, there's a lot of drama involved with this because we rent from 30 year long family friends and they always say, you know, don't rent to friends and stuff like that. And uh, stuff's going to unfold in a weird way because this has been something that's been bubbling for a little while. Now my biggest qualm to be honest, and this is where I am honest, um, not that this is something public to air out or anything like that. I don't want to throw anybody under the bus, but my whole thing was, you know, it's your building. I've been here a long time, and I can't tell you what to do. If you guys are selling the building, you're giving it to your son, whatever you want to do, that's your fucking business. It's not my business. My thing was I would have preferred if I was to have had it done over the way I wanted was to just obviously have more notice and to be able to prepare for that. August 1st? Yeah, which is a month. <laughs> Which is you know nine years they want to give you a month yeah that's bullshit but it's like you're an employee yeah and they can just lay you off for no reason right but if I you know if if you quit you got to give them two weeks but if you get fired you oh, can that, get fired I the day always up. just straight up quit I got a funny story about that coming up later. all right awesome so d I, we won't forget to go to that but just to you know I don't again I don't want to talk about this too much publicly I just wanted to let you know that for the first time. And also, you know, it's going to be a bittersweet thing because, you know, in a lot of ways, it's been a long time coming. I mean, I've been here probably a little too long. I mean, there's a lot of as much good memories as there are here. There's a lot of bad shit here that's happened here, too. So I don't think it's the worst thing to find a new place to live. Like, that's I'm not really I'm not worried about the actual what's actually happening. I guess the stressors are just the timetable. And then also, you know, with my financial situation, it's not going to be the easiest thing to pull off. I'm pretty positive that um, I'll be able to pool whatever resources necessary from my vast network of family and friends to get me by. But I mean, this couldn't have, well, this could have happened at a worse time if it was like three months ago. But this is a pretty bad time to happen. I guess the only good thing is that I am doing really good. I'm getting back to work. I got shit in the works. I'm doing much better than I was like three months ago. Like if this happened like three months ago, then I probably maybe could have ended up homeless. And I don't think that's a possibility at this point. I think that something will, uh, the stars will align on some level. But yeah, that's the big breaking news for today because I just got dropped that bombshell on me. It was a meeting in person? It was. And um, So how did you react? Were you like? I was very, I was straightforward. 
and I won't get into all the details of the drama. I will do really that. With, I'll do that with you after we're done. Okay. But for the podcast, um, I was very stoic and accepting. Um, I can tell that you're like fuming. Yeah, I mean, I, I I have my emotions about it. I'm I'm not a super reactive guy in that way. Like I'm pretty pretty good at keeping my cool. So I kept a level head. I expressed myself fairly. I heard out what she what they had to say, and you know I definitely let them know how I felt about it. the The biggest thing is, um, this doesn't just affect me. As I mentioned, my mom rents out the downstairs and has for some time, and she's also to vacate. So she is not necessarily handling this news the same way I am, with oh, grace yeah. and logic. Um, she is rather irate and this is gonna be a big thing this is gonna turn into a big thing but with all that being said um obviously it's a storyline to track and follow for the podcast because four weeks from now or whatever it is we'll, yeah. we'll be taping in a new environment but um something to keep an eye on and um you know i, I already know i got a whole staff of guys that are ready to help me move and um ah the old go-to of course and i don't even need to ask you guys know who you are be ready get your weight belts and your gloves and all that shit ready to rock beers are on me pizza and wings on <laughs> see i was gonna say caesar. caesar but he can't even do that anymore <laughs> what he can't do what he's not at frankie's so usually he oh, would be the hookup yeah, yeah. so i don't know do we you want to help us out I, don't, I mean fuck yeah, all our 66 listeners from last podcast. Somebody <laughs> step up. There's a Molinaro's on the go will cater a moving party. But that's yeah, you, Ange. That's right. So, yeah, a tumultuous time is ahead. July is going to be nuts. It's kind of fun, though. I think I would take that approach to it. I'm looking at it as an exciting new chapter because, you know, even, you know, we talked about this last week with the sports team fandom and things like that it's like i've i've i have really outgrown this place on a lot of levels if i was to do it all over again today i would not decorate it the same way um i love it it's great it's a great place i'm gonna make sure i get photos of every inch of it so that i can remember exactly what it's like i'm a little i'm a little concerned for clarabelle in the sense that Oh, Cats yeah. don't like to fucking move. I mean, they like their spots. You know what I mean? She, she's, she's been here the longest, so she's gonna, she's gonna be fucking upset. And obviously, that's a consideration for me finding a new place. But I mean, yeah, I, I'm not sweating it too bad. I took the news pretty well, considering. But yeah, that's the big fucking story of the day. Um, and that's that. I don't want to speak on it too much. I don't want to give away. Well, you're you're kind of hard to rile up. For sure. But for I, sure, I could tell when I got here. That's bad news to get, right? Because yeah. I'm a, I'm on a hot streak right now in the sense that everything seems to be going my yeah, way, lined up, right? and everything's going good. Ducks I'm, are in a row. Yep, every I'm back working on my music. I got fucking shit in the works. I got fucking you know I'm cooking up multiple dishes in the kitchen. I got a little job action over here, a little job action over here. I'm really you know we reunited. Me and Eric reunited. Me and Shu felt reunited. Everything feels yeah, great. What's going on? I don't know, but everything feels great right now. Everything. It feels like a just good time. You know what I mean? It just feels like everything's clicking on all cylinders. Like I got my confidence back. I'm fucking feeling good. I'm fucking reaching out to everybody. It, it's like, you know, having good friends around is so fucking important, man. And like it's it really does uh, mean so much. And it's 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 a shame that that goes away. For, it's not anybody's fault at all, but it's just it's it's unfortunate. It's weird. Like four years could go by. And you don't realize it. You know what I mean? Because everybody's just kind of doing their own thing and got sh different shit going on. But it's it's so it feels so good, especially with the vibe of summer going on, like for yeah. to be reconnected and just have all this. Just know you have that web of people that are still there. Absolutely. So um, I'm not too worried about it. Um, there's a few things that are going to, I'm going to have to get a few lucky breaks, but I think that, uh, I think everything will be cool. Everything always works out. Absolutely. So that's the big bombshell news drop of the day. That was shocking. 
Yeah, definitely. And and it's funny because I was talking to you last week about how long you've been at this place. I know. You're I can like re- almost a decade. Yep. I can remember actually the first weekend I moved in, you, Bill, and Caesar came here. My TV's been in the same spot. I've never rearranged yeah, this room. Nothing's moved. Yep. <laughs> nothing's moved at all. I've never rearranged. And I remember we watched like Playmakers. We hung out. It was like the most. It was the most exhilarating feeling. I was like 24 years old. Your own spot. And it's like, oh, this is awesome. And the reason I got my spot, to be completely frank, I might as well tell this because we're talking about the subject. But when I was 24, um, and I lived, so there was a transitional period at Livingston where my mom was the head of the house for a little while, and then she moved into Jimmy's house her boyfriend, and my dad took over. And when my dad took over, things changed because my dad and my mom are not the same. That's why I always chose to live with my mom, because with my mom, I could do same. whatever the fuck I wanted. It's exactly right. the same so here. So when my dad took over the house, a lot of things changed, some for the better, some Strict. for the worse. <laughs> yep, so things like having girls over was suddenly, that wasn't cool. I remember my dad's quote at the time, because I did it a couple times, and I remember him saying something along the lines, I'm sorry, Craig Money, but I got to just tell this how it went down, was, you know, this isn't a flop house, was I think it's called. Oh, dude, my dad said that <laughs> shit too. Seriously, my dad used that line too. And I was like, what are you talking about? Right, and I was so confused at the time because, like, you know, I'm 24 years old. I'm trying to get laid, and I'm thinking, like, you know, if anyone should understand this, it would be my dad, but right? He's a dude. He's Not my there. mom, right. Like, my right. dad should get this, but I get it now. It makes sense now, and a lot of the stability and structure that he brought to the table would have benefited me in other ways, but at the time, I had just met someone at Pharaoh's um, who was a uh, model in New York City for a period of time. Then she moved back here to work at Pharaoh's, which is where I met her, and used the classic line that you're not supposed to use which is you're, too you're way to too sweaty. yep <laughs> you're way too beautiful to be working here it worked though. it worked like a charm which is crazy because you'd think they'd be you know tuned into something like that but um at that time i was pretty desperate to see where that would lead and so basically, long story short, we got in touch with some family friends and they happened to have a place um, available, which is what led me here. So me and Claire Bell have been here since December of 2015, going on nine years now, and it's the end of an era. And um, there's been a lot of shit that's gone down here, but um, it's just one of those things. We got to have um, everyone, all the originals that have been here throughout common that would be amazing i would love that i would love nothing who more. are the original i mean me obviously, well caesar. yes bill caesar um sheezy would obviously be involved Sheezy. and just spent a great deal Even of time jump, here maybe. jump spent a great deal of time here playing fifa that's like 2017 who that era kid, uh, who like did the gatorade <sighs> shit zach yeah zach p lived downstairs for yeah. a week that was a big ordeal um Gallardi's gotta be Gallardi spent time there's been I mean just countless even even uh B Sprung B Sprung's been in the work I mean there's been so many just in and out and um it'll be sad on some level but I think that it's it's probably run its course and it's it's probably for the best yeah it seems like a new it it seems like a new chapter it seems like a new regime like a new mood is entered the fold and it's just time to just do what we got to do i just you know i hope to god and pray to god that i can make things work out in a in a good way and i'm taking these off i don't like seeing red everywhere it's gonna be fine man yeah everything should be good everything will be fine so we could get this whole place cleared out in like a couple hours yeah it's really not that crazy it just looks like a lot because there's so much on the walls um I think it's a good opportunity to like sell a lot of shit or get rid of a lot of shit. Like it'll be good. It'll be a good time to like clean out. You, you know? know how on like hoarders, like they'll be like, "Let's throw this out," mm-hmm. and like someone will be like, "No, that's important to me." But it's like a ribbon. Yeah, that's how I'll be because I save a lot of shit. I but... mean, how are you going to get rid of any of this? True, like, I would save it all. Yeah, a lot of it will definitely get saved. I'm not saying you're a hoarder, by the way. I'm just saying it's tough to get rid of. There's a little bit of a hoarder shit. vibe. Yeah, no, for sure. But, I, um. Again, that just happened today, so that's why it's pertinent. That's why it's news. That's why it's on my mind. So I'm trying to wrap my head around the idea of that. I wasn't ready for that on any level. 
Um, but hey, that's, that's how it goes. What time was it? By the way? It was about two o'clock. So she reached out to my mom and said that she wanted to talk to both of us. So we had a feeling that something bad was coming, but we didn't really know what. We were thinking like maybe a rent raise, maybe... Rent um, raise at the worst. Right. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, which, you know, would have sucked, but whatever. I wouldn't have, you know, it wouldn't have caused me to move by any means. And so, um, yeah, um, the funniest part, and I hate to, I really don't want to shed a lot of light on this or spread too many details, but the funniest part was... You know, if you go through here, it's got a kind of a 1970s vibe to it. It's very, you know, you got the radiators and a lot of old shit. It's there. There could be my favorite part is in the kitchen. Those dots that are painted on the. Yeah, you've yeah. seen the dots. Yeah, <laughs> you got to see it to believe it. But um, apparently now, it's time to gut and renovate this whole upstairs and make it modern and make it, you know, litty, which. You know, to raise rent. Yeah. To, you know, draw. Well, there's no shortage of people looking to rent places. For sure, for sure. Like my rent is ridiculous. It's crazy right now. Couldn't couldn't be a worse time, really. Yeah. So I'd, I'd say save up all your bread. Yeah. And buy a property yourself. I know that would be amazing and if we I could do. Uh, me, I'll I'll go in with you. That would be amazing. I would love to do that. Well. Let's keep our eyes open. If only, yeah. So it's something to think about for the future. But don't want this whole thing to be a drag. So yeah, I know. For, <laughs> it's kind of downer right now. For the for the next four weeks or so, we should be taping in our usual spot here with the Patrice Shrine and the Stone Cold Shrine, and everything will be as normal. From there, we will adapt and overcome because that's what we do. Um. Check that camera while you're at it. Yeah. How we doing? Uh, yeah, looks, good. looks good? Yeah. Okay, cool. So with that being said, with that bombshell being dropped and moving on to some current events, um, last night, if you happen to tune in, was a rather entertaining and exciting Game 7 of the Stanley Cup playoffs. I don't know how many hockey watchers we have <coughs> joining us, but shit i think it's something worth talking about because that was a hell of a fucking game and yeah, i feel sorrow and disappointment for mcdavid most importantly and then the tits girl as well because i can't i know she's going through girl it is like she's a fucking legend out here right now and it's crazy that you can just if she's gonna be a millionaire now. imagine being a girl and knowing that that's all you have to do to just it's raise insane. your profile. Yeah, she just opened up the front porch, as they call it. Right. She just flashed the headlights, now and now she's a viral worldwide she did phenomenon. Playboy already. Did you see that? Did she really? Yeah. I didn't take a look at it. I'll be taking a peek at that for okay. sure. Um, <laughs> That's insane. But I think, you know, the series itself was pretty fucking entertaining. You got Florida going up 3 0 on them, and then you got Edmonton coming back, tying it at 3 3, forcing a game seven. And I think that's the most disappointing thing for Edmonton fans it's like in my opinion if you look at it with this if it's the Sabres it's like you almost would rather get swept yeah I would rather get swept well I don't know because then you have those memories you do it it is a fun journey I think in the moment though you're thinking like man like it felt like it was destiny it felt like we had it yeah. locked and then like you get so close to get so close to something and then have it ripped away from you it's just like ah, oh, I feel like Buffalo fans would be like that's Buffalo. For sure. They but definitely I, would. I haven't heard that. I don't call it Edmonton. It's, it's yeah, they're, they they got they have cups to spare. They had yeah, the Gretzky they days. They, they had Gretzky and they have McDavid. Exactly. You the, can't be too mad. I would have been happy to have seen a Canadian team win it finally. I think it would have been the first time since 93. Did you see the last five, I think it's four or five, cup uh, finalists in the Eastern Conference are all Florida teams. Yeah, the cup the cup's been pretty much living in the Florida Heat for the do you last. Think the taxes have something to do with that. That could be a factor. You got to think these players, no state tax. I mean, yeah. that's a big factor if you're going to resign somewhere. And it's pretty weird because there's always that like joke and running gag about like the Florida teams. Like it's like, oh yeah, they don't like why why would they even have hockey in Florida? You know what I mean? Like it's it's a weird thing because it's like ice. I only say that when I'm mad that they're good. Yeah, and and they're good. The both teams are good. You have the Lightning who won, they won two right, 2020 and 2021. Yeah, they they yeah, went back they had to back. COVID win. Yep, 
and then Florida was in the finals last year and then won it this year. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of Florida action. I mean, it's it's just a weird thing because even last year, like with Vegas winning, that's such a new team and that's such a weird environment. It's like it doesn't really fit. It would have been cool to see one of these classic Canadian city teams win it, bring it back to Canada. You got McDavid. He's the best player in the league. I feel like that's good for the NHL if he wins the cup. Yeah, you want your best player to have a championship. Definitely. That's a good thing overall. And they gave him the Conn Smythe, which... He didn't show up for. And I think that trophy... Would you have done that? It's tough to say. I mean, I see a lot of people calling him a shithead for not showing up. But at the same time, like, if he showed up and was happy, then all the other people would have been like, oh, he doesn't even care that he lost the cup. So it's like, you can't win in that, that situation. Yeah, and it's like, oh, do you want to steal a Panthers shine? True. Yeah. Plus, that trophy... I'd kick it on the ice. I would burn it. I mean, that, that trophy is just going to remind him of coming back from 0-3 and, and almost doing it right. and falling short. And that's going to be a reminder It'll of... still never look bad. Yeah, I mean, it's... it's you You assume... You assume, especially in hockey, that he's going to win one eventually, right? Yeah, it's inevitable. You think so? It makes sense. It's logically, it checks out. Mathematically, I mean, it Michael checks out. Got one. Reinhardt got one. Right. A lot of former Riley Sabers. There was a lot of graphics. Like Pozo. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of graphics flying around this morning on the Twitter verse of the former Sabers who have won. Dude, if you put that Florida team in Buffalo and just switched rosters. Like that Florida team in Buffalo would have finished last. Absolutely. It's just crazy how something about the Sabres, and, you know, hopefully we can all pray and hope that, you know, Lindy Ruff can bring them back to the glory days. I know I'm, I got my hope held out, but it's just, it's crazy watching all these good players and then they always get shipped off exactly where they need to go to win the fucking cup. Yeah, it's like they're doing them a, like, oh, sorry, it didn't work out here. I'll send you to the cup favorite. Exactly. It's like Sabres job placement. It's like they're, like we were talking about a little earlier with like recruiting and shit. It's like they're looking out. It's like, oh, Akposo, you're pretty old. You're going to retire soon. Well, Florida is probably going to win it this year. So yeah, let's get yeah. you down there. Let's get you a cup. Dude, I want to work for them, man. Absolutely, man. Send so me to where I'm going to win. It's fucking nuts watching that. It's it's like, you know, even you made the joke earlier about like, you know, Tage Thompson's going to win it with fucking Utah. Utah yeah. <laughs> and then I, my response was, you know, yeah, just Josh. Allen, he'll get the Super Bowl, but it's going to be with fucking Minnesota or that, Tennessee that. or whatever the fuck. So hopefully fucking that won't happen. But when you look at the track record, it's like, I mean, fuck, dude. I mean, I think it's 12 years now of no playoff berths. That's a 13. long time in hockey. That's a long time in hockey. And, and half the league makes the playoffs. Exactly. Each year, so that's incredible. I think the Bills drought was 17. That's when six teams from each conference made it. Yeah, I think a little more understandable. I guess. For sure. And the Bucks, I think, had a 14 year before Brady came to Tampa. So, I mean, it happens. But in hockey, with half the league making it, it's, it's pretty you can crazy. Back into the playoffs. Exactly. Maybe. And they almost made it, not this season, but the season before. Yeah, 91 points. Right. One they, point behind the Panthers. Exactly. And then this season they like kind of regressed a little bit, but they got a good goalie now. Yeah, they scored two years ago, but they had shitty goaltending. And right. This year they couldn't score and they had good goaltending. It's crazy because like something simple and stupid like just using the Sabres in NHL, the game, they have a great roster. They have great players. They have, you know, the lines are good. They fucking – they're rated pretty high and they'd be a cool team to play with but it just makes you wonder like organizationally and um what the fuck is going on that they just can't get it together and i guess getting a new coach not a new coach but an old coach that has had a proven track record of success with the team hope's got to be high right now and i know that that's the saying every year there's always next year but they need the strict dad yeah they got to have somebody who I didn't. I mean, these guys that have been coaching, I don't. I don't know that much about them, but um, they seemed like kind of random guys. Pushovers. Yeah. Yeah. So, no one really got fired up. I like my coach, like Lindy Ruff. I, I like him to be mad. It's good because it's a it's a level of passion that like you a dad. you want him to be pissed off if shit goes wrong because then you know he's going to try and fix it. Yeah. So best wishes to them. Congratulations to the Edmonton Oilers. And right now we're in the dog days of summer, which is no basketball, no hockey. We got only baseball. Oh, the worst. The absolute worst. And we're looking forward to the NFL season. So 
We're going to try and survive that. Did you ever get into baseball? The only time in my life that I've ever watched baseball consistently was COVID when the Rays were really good and in the World Series. I started watching it, and I like convinced myself that it was fun to watch. And there was one really good, exciting game. It was like game five of the World Series, and there was like a walk-off home run in Tampa Bay 1. And this was when Brady had just gone to the Bucs. Lightning had just won the Cup. The Bucs were looking at a potential Super Bowl, which they did end up winning. And then the Rays were also in the World Series. So it was like this Tampa revival of sorts. Not even revival, but this Tampa Tampa. fucking renaissance thing that was going on. And um, yeah, so I took a peek and I watched more baseball in that year than I probably have watched in my entire life. And it's definitely boring, but it has this weird kind of vibe to it where... You can have it on and it's like you don't have to be fully checked in. You can kind of like do other shit and then it can get exciting at points. The playoffs are pretty exciting. They can get good. There was was definitely some uh, tense moments and some exciting shit going on. The 03-04 Yankees, Red Sox. That's out. So that's in line with uh, Panthers Oilers. Definitely, because that was the three zero. The three zero, which is legendary. uh, The ninth inning with a one run lead. No shit. Out Mariano Rivera. That was in Game Seven. Uh, no, game four. Game four. Okay. Them. Oh, okay. And then and that's when they started the comeback. Yeah, insane. I remember being on AOL in uh, um, America Wilson. You remember her? I do. Craziest she, name. Um, her name was America. I, I think believe. it was just America. I think it was America. With an A. I think so. She went well, to my elementary school, and Ryan Shanley dated her for a period of time. So I I know a little bit about her. But I think everyone called her America. I don't know if she was a Yankee, but her or birth a Red name Sox was America. Fan, but we were like arguing on like. No shit. Messenger about the series, and I got invested because of her. That's good. Like I a personal to rivalry. Wrong. Yeah. Were you Boston or New York? I was New York. Oh, fuck. so she must have been Boston. Must have. Yeah, and it was it was humili. I was, oh, go Yankees! We're sweeping your ass. That's great too, because that's such a personal rivalry. I hate. I this is unprofessional, but I really have to pee really bad. So that's you're gonna okay. have to carry I'll hold for it a second. Down. Yeah, just carry. I'm gonna check the camera too. Yeah, check it. Let me know if it's going good. You carry. I will carry. Let me do a oh, yeah, we're little fireball here. I'll tell you a funny story, guys. Yeah, tell the story. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Woo! Little shot of fireball, a little bit, a little bit blue. Let's go. Anyway, so a few years ago, I quit my job that I had for about six years. And I didn't quit it properly. I just cut off all communication and screwed everybody over. But I didn't feel like I was screwing anyone over because it's a multi-billion dollar business. So I haven't seen anybody since I quit, and it's been two years. Are you talking about West Her? Yeah. And the other day I'm at work. What do you know? My old manager walks in, and he's one of the guys I kind of screwed over, and he just shows up. And he's like, What's Have you up? seen him since? No, I haven't oh, seen wow. anybody. I don't even know like where these people go. There are so many employees, but I haven't ran into one. And he came in. He goes, "Well, he retired after I left." He goes, "You made the right decision." Wow! And it like healed my heart. You never hear that. Yeah, that's awesome, like, dude. I'm glad you got out of there. It was pretty fun. <laughs> that's pretty fucking cool, man. Like yeah, that's you. It was. I was always nervous about running into. Somebody. You feel like they would like give you a shitty attitude, yeah, like, fuck with you hell, a little man? bit. Yeah, like oh, dude, you're missing out. Like we're fucking growing. We're fucking business is yeah. booming. A B style. And um, that's how you could. I could. He's been down to earth since I met him. So I, that's I, a great fucking nice rewarding little uh, chapter end there. I think. Oh yeah, when he walked in, I was like. Oh boy, here we go. I'm gonna have to like talk about my old job. Maybe like, explain yourself on yeah, some I have level. To explain myself. Yeah, you I, never. I had to everything do that. in the back of my head. I'm like, oh, I had a mental breakdown. I didn't like it. You know, all the excuses. For sure. Which were all kind of true. All valid, but yeah. hard to explain on but some you level. Don't want to give those excuses because it makes. I I I'd rather just be like, yeah, I left. I fucking bailed, dude. Yeah. I tapped. Yeah. I, I went nuts. It, was, it like healed me. <laughs> I can imagine that would happen. I mean, that's a great, again, rare story that you don't hear too often of running, of having that encounter and then also 
getting the validation that you did the right thing. Yeah. What a great feeling. If they probably, well, he was probably mad at me in the moment. I'm right? sure. Time yeah, heals all like wounds. They were calling my dad and stuff. <laughs> were they really? Yeah, because my dad runs Niagara County Transportation, so they knew him well. So did you go like MIA for a little Dude, bit? MI, I straight went MIA. I did not. I cut off my phone. I didn't. Sh- I pulled into the parking lot and I called Ashley, and I said I don't want to go in. And she was like, "Come home." I'm like, "Okay." And I just came home and I never went in there again. Uh, well, shout outs to her for being so supportive and nurturing in that moment. What were you thinking at that time period? Because here you are, you're at a job. Your future. Now, let me ask you this: Was she pregnant at this time, or had you already? No, we already had. Yeah. So you had already had a kid. You have that to think about and provide for. What was in? What was your mindset in the midst of that? Because I've been in that situation but not with so much on the line where it's affecting other human beings. Yeah. What were you thinking? What was your what was your route of how you can get out of this or what what was your rationale for, you know, I can make this work or whatever the case may be? Um, I didn't care in that moment. I I was struggling really bad at that point mentally. So every basically every time I went to work, I'd have an anxiety attack. That's insane. A panic attack, basically. A, yeah, like I thought I would be dying, so I'd go in the back, and I'd act like I was doing shit. But really, I was really like trying to calm down. I was trying to make sure I didn't die, man. And because I was getting no sleep, I just had a baby, and then I'd feel guilty because I'm not home raising the baby, and then I'd get resentful because I'm like, why am I not home with a kid with your kid yeah your kid so it all just built up and then after i quit every morning i was like having really bad panic attacks probably from the residual like what have i done yeah yeah like the shrap what's my future now like you know but it's never that big of a deal i I just i felt very guilty for not being there for my daughter you know well i think that's a good a good reason if any is and it, you didn't make shit there anyways it, i mean i made a salary of a decent salary but i worked over my salary so yeah you put in a lot of time there i remember even going back a ways before that happened i remember you were working like six days a week yeah it was ridiculous grind and dude always in the malaine's gear I three days when I, where i work now you were always malaned up within the malaine's dude, gear i, never like, I feel like you wore up. that shit 24 7 i don't know if i even changed for four years you pretty much slept in that shit because you had to you were right back at it again the following yeah, morning the more it's like wake up at seven or six 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 yeah I could tell you were in peril a little bit, and this was obviously a little bit before that happened, but I mean, I could definitely sense that you were looking for a way out, looking for some sort of option. I mean, you you have to look back on it now and think that how much better things are now and oh, how much, it's so much you know better. what I mean? I'm so much more happier. And that's a good perspective to keep in mind, like even if you're at work where you work now and you're having maybe a rough night or things aren't going your way, you're covered yeah. in fucking mulch and garbage or whatever the fuck. <laughs> like the other day. Yeah, and, and then you can think about, you know, like, well, there was a time when this was the, like the greatest thing ever because compared to what I was doing before, this is a hundred times yeah. better position to be in. So yeah. luckily everything seems to have worked and, out and, on some level. I got like mechanics are kind of bratty are they really yeah like brats like they come in like what's what do they call drake zesty yeah zesty like, that's like almost my, kind of slightly gay parts? and you're like oh they're not here and they'll be like oh <sighs> yeah like they're it's like really bratty and I, that would really get me mad that's like, nuts because you think of a mechanic guy like when i think of like a tough dude alpha right yeah but alpha, none of them were none of that's, zero that's of crazy because i think what i think of when i think of a mechanic i think of david putty from seinfeld just like caveman style machismo yeah alpha male kind of dumb as rocks but fixes cars knows his shit about cars and yeah to be zesty is kind of that's like out of left field be like bratty about that would definitely catch me off guard and i'd catch like i caught this one kid um when i he didn't think i was around he was like talking crap about me oh yeah but i got defended because the kid's a fucking idiot what was he saying he was like well mike doesn't do anything here Meanwhile, I have the most... You heard that. I heard it, yeah. Oh, I have the boy. most sales for the last four years. So my I heard my manager, who is a great manager, by the way, his name is Ryan, he's like, you don't watch him work. I do. 
He, and then he was like, you don't get mad at him because your part's not here. That's not on him. It, and I walked in and I was like, what's going on? Oh, man, the confrontation. Yeah, and then, the kid, then the kid, he's fucking, oh, he's a disgusting. He kid. flaked out. He fla- Oh, he totally. He folded. He was like, oh, yeah. I'm trying to think of a time when I got busted talking trash. or Dude, I've, I've been caught, too. Okay, so one time, this was probably like 2013, around the time when... There was like a gym era where it was like me, Caesar, Andy, and Craig Money. We would we. I remember the day. It was when I just moved home from Florida. We were all at my house drinking Red Dogs. I probably weighed about 150 fucking pounds, and I had never lifted a weight in my life. And I remember we were talking. This is when I was still thinking like I was gonna be a wrestler. So like I remember we were all talking about it and. We were just like, dude, let's just sign up at Ultimate next Monday. And I texted my dad, told him what we wanted to do. And my dad, out of the kindness of his heart, like decided to take all of us three fucking idiots under his wing and start going to the gym with us every day, right? So this is like eight months later. And me and my dad are have this really funny kind of like headbutting relationship because we're a lot alike, but we're also, we couldn't be more different. So like a lot of times we'll just disagree on shit. We're both always late all the time too. So this one day, me and Caesar were going on Friday. We were going to do legs, I think. And something about my dad like texted me and said like, I'll be there at, like we were going at six and he said like, I'll be there at 6.30 or something. And we got into like this small fight (laughs) and fucking me and Caesar are standing there on the leg press and Caesar's working out and I and I remember I was just looking at Caesar and I was like I'm just so fucking sick of his bullshit he's always fucking late he does this and that and then if I'm late he gives me all this shit he treats me like shit if I'm late but then he's fucking late every time I turn around to the to the shake bar and I just see my dad giving me the finger (laughs) and I just dude my heart sank into my fucking balls so he had a preemptive finger up uh, it, dude he, he must have been there for like a minute just hearing me fucking go off about how he's always late and he doesn't oh, respect me he doesn't hilarious. treat me with respect and yeah he gave me the and he was pissed like i can tell when my dad's pissed and he was fucking pissed and Let's it was go, go. it was so fucking awkward because we were supposed to all work out together but then like he started doing his workout and then like we were doing our workout and then so it was like this weird I remember finally going up to him and I was like I'm really sorry like whatever you you busted me cuz I yeah, yeah I don't I mean if I'm Best caught I'm just yeah. fuck I'm caught like you caught me I mean what are you going to do we all talk shit we all fucking right. it yeah. happens you I know what I'm saying I just don't want to hear you it you don't want to hear it That's and you it. do not want someone to hear it yeah. because it's so embarrassing like it was just so demoralizing and um yeah that was the last time I felt that feeling until recently and I talked about this on the last episode too, but when I had the little OnlyFans snafu with this girl I've been texting, that was the, that was the first time I had anything close to that feeling since. But when you're caught in that moment and you can't really do anything about it, you really have no choice but to come clean. I mean, you can try and weasel your way out. and lie. I mean, what was I going to say? I was talking about somebody else. Yeah, that's I the mean, only go-to. It was pretty much clear as fucking day. And the thing about, the thing about my dad that's nuts is, you know, there's this physical fear that I have of him that's very valid because if he wanted to fucking throw me into the ceiling fan per se he could even at fucking almost 60 years old still wouldn't want to fight him still wouldn't want to take him so you know there's but I push those buttons and I push that boundary as far as I can but if he ever snaps on me to that level I buckle immediately because I I don't want that problem I mean even in his in his older age he could fuck me up i'm pretty sure so yeah but he'd never hit you no of course not and that's that was you know what that was actually the worst part because you would think that with his size and demeanor and shit like that that he would be like all right let's go and fucking jack me up against the wall put the gloves on he was hurt it hurt his feelings which yeah. made it twenty thousand times worse you know what i mean because my dad walks in he sees me talking shit about him and it's like a betrayal of sorts and that's the worst thing you so, don't want to be betrayed. So you went golfing for Father's Day, right? I did. I went golfing for Father's Day, and then I went golfing again last week w- with my dad at Was Niagara Orleans. Was that your gift to him? Just, like, hang out? Yeah, because he paid, and he's been paying. Oh, well, whatever. It's still. Ha- I don't hang out with my dad, and he. I'm pretty sure he has my number blocked. Really? I don't, because I tried calling him for... Fa- watch this. I'll try to call my dad right now. Alive? All right, let's Live. hear it. Yeah, and it. he's like, you never call. You didn't do anything for... Fa-. Well, he doesn't say that. My mom relays me the message. 
This is my dad's phone number right here. I'm going to call it. Watch. When's the last time you talked to him? I saw him last week. Okay. It's ringing. Please leave your message. Oh, that was a that might have been a fucking ignore. No, that happens every single time. So there's nothing I can do about it. There's nothing I can do. You got to I can't me- call him. I can't text him. How old's your dad? My dad was born in 1957. So he's He's almost seventy, so he's uh, three years away from being seventy. So what is that? You got to do what you you got to mend that. I know. I really do. I need a better relationship with my dad. I really do. You got to mend that. Me and my dad had a little tiff a couple weeks ago about his birthday, and I went above and beyond to nip that in the bud because. I love my dad to death, and these little things that we do when we go golfing and shit like that, it's it's so wholesome dad and son shit. Like, he's good at golf. I suck at golf, so he's, like, showing me what to do and, like, giving me yeah. tips in his little and way it that he does. probably makes him feel good. For sure, like- for sure. And um, I'm sure he would love it if I could pay for a round, but <laughs> I got to get a new apartment how, now. So. How expensive is golf now? Uh, at Niagara Orleans, we've been going to Niagara Orleans Country Club in Gasport. It's probably like 40 oh, that's, something that's with a right cart. I yeah. I did bring the beers last time, which was at least a little something, but four pack. But then I have to hear, oh, you don't, you shouldn't have to drink to that play nine hole. It's whatever. Dude, dude. But he had a couple too, so fuck him. I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> Not fuck him. Don't, yeah, I didn't don't hurt say him. that. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, it's like, your dads this is stupid to say but like dads are fucking underrated they really are like moms always get all the fucking you're a dad i mean you yeah. you this is very relevant to you like moms get a lot of the praise and the credit and rightfully so because moms fucking rule too but like dads are fucking underrated especially to a son i think because not to you know you got your thing with your daughter and i'm sure that's just well, as special i have cameron too so that's bad. true that's a good point. So uh, there's something about that male like bonding thing, like with like sports shit and like I don't know. There's just you can't really replicate it. And I think that probably your dad would love it if you really took the extra steps to yeah. fucking yeah, figure like, that out. They'll get shocked. Even Ashley, she'll get shocked if I'm like strict. I'll right. Like, get in your room. And I would be, like, be shocked too because I've never seen you well, that's in that I mode. Am. I've never seen you in dad mode. That's how I'm in dad mode. That um, would be nuts to see. I would... Shit, pick it up. Put it over there. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. I don't like doing it, but like I can see shades of my father coming out in me. I'm sure. But I'm they sure. need it. They need it. They so do. Bad. They do. You need a strong fucking fatherly presence, dude. It's like that's you got to have that. It's so important. It was funny. Even I might have to drop his picture in again, but I went to Schufelts this past week. And he's got like six fucking kids running around, and and he's like, I was he's him running him. shit. Yeah, like, he's like a general manager, right? Like, like he, house, like his right? kids start fucking around with the sprinkler, and like he's like, nope, that's enough, that's enough of that. <laughs> Grab the spr-. It's like, dude, it's this is so funny with kids. It's insane, and it's so funny because I just always think about when I was a kid, and I would be at my house fucking around, and my dad had like friends over or like my uncles over and shit and like they were just sitting around drinking beers and like they were the adults and like we're the kids fucking around it's like so weird to be just this random guy that comes over and like all and everything like say hi to cody and i'm like hey what's up little kids like blah 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 like do you want cody to come back and come swimming it's like i'm just like this random old dude to them like they don't know anything about me they just like see me and see an adult the the roles are reversed and i'm just looking at them like wishing i was them because like they have no idea the terror and horror that's on the way but it was cool to see dude it's weird um it's weird having friends that are dads because in my mind, like I'm so far removed from that, but it can happen like that, right? Like it yeah. could, it's not oh, that like, hard. Like I said, when I met Ashley, I, we were pregnant. We, she was pregnant a month later. That's insane. I know. And I told, I told you the story earlier. I got a call when I was at work and I was like, <gasps> she's like, yeah, I'm pregnant. I'm like, That's what? a bombshell for sure. Yeah. I, Speaking well, of. I kind of was happy about it because I wanted a girl. I got a girl. That's good. But um, I want to get have another, and I think that's what's going to happen. So something to look out for: new kid dropping soon. You'll be <laughs> new selfie dropping tomorrow. New, <laughs> new kid dropping in ten months. Oh, it's really cool, man. I mean, it's um, it's uh, 
I got, I mean, I got Ethan, I got you, I got Andy. It's like, it's cool seeing you guys like step up and do what's necessary. Like if any of you guys were like pieces of shit, deadbeats, it would be really sad. Mm -hmm. But yeah. that hasn't happened yet, luckily, on any level. So it's nice knowing that, I don't know, like it, it's going to be, what's going to be really weird is when your guys' kids grow up to be like adult sized. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I always look at, I'm like, well, if I, if she was born when I was 33, then I'll be 54 and she can come drink at the bar with me. Yeah, dude. Like, yeah, like and you probably will like do that. And yeah. I see what I always think about is like, you know, how long do I really want to wait? Because, you know, my, my thing is always like in my idea, in my head, if everything goes to plan, which nothing has so far. So I'm assuming this won't either, but like I would ideally, probably plan for and want to have a kid maybe around 40 late 30s right but that's an old dad like compared to my dad who was like 26 when he had me wow really? i'll be like yeah i'll be like yeah, he is still young looking. fucking 60 when they're 20 right which is like kind of nuts but i don't know we'll see how things go yeah. i got a long way to 40 a lot of shit could happen so i mean anything's possible yeah my mom was like 19 when she had her first kid that's yeah same weird. here same here and that's so fucking young dude imagine being 19 yeah and maybe like she was 20 i somewhere somewhere still around still really young you know when what i mean i was 20 i was just an idiot absolutely i still am absolutely i still feel like a fucking idiot and at 19 it was about 300 times worse i'm glad i waited to have a kid because at least i could figure out i was an idiot yeah you had some good life experience at yeah. that point built up you'd been through some trials and tribulations you have to go through trials and tribulations otherwise you can't really forge any sort of yeah there's no way like ashley's mom was 16 when she had that's it. crazy yeah and people just fucking what's crazy about it is like almost any situation that comes up you just kind of fucking figure it out yeah. right so yeah. it's like it usually works out in some level like, I'm sure when my mom was 19 and my dad was 22, they probably weren't ready to have Courtney, but it, like, they made it fucking work. And, like, that's almost what becomes so special about it. It's like we had, like, this struggle and, like, it, like nothing was certain and we, like, didn't know where we would live. We didn't know what we would do for work, but, like, we made it fucking work. It makes you work harder. Well, for because sure. you can't fail at that point. Exactly. Like you have to. I can say even from my own experiences over the last few years like having nothing to when you just only provide for yourself there's a lot more risks you can take and do dumb shit and put yourself in really bad spots if i had a kid through all those years i mean there's a lot of things i would have done a lot fucking differently you know what i mean because yeah. you can't you're not only are you not only do you have another person relying on you but you have another person relying on you who's not able to function not able to they're they're relying on you on such a deep level that it's like it gives you this intrinsic motivation to, you know what? I don't want to go to work, but fuck, I have to go to work. It, it, you know what I'm saying? Exact, if I if my daughter comes up to me and she goes, "Daddy, juice," and we don't have any juice, it's got to be done. I, it's got yeah. I will make it happen. Right. I can't tell you how many happen. times I've gone without juice in here. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's been a lot it's been a lot you know because it's Yo, like Cody juice right it's like I the only person who's gonna not have juice is me so I know that I can fucking <laughs> so tough it out you're not gonna be baby yeah I'll fucking I'll make it fucking work somehow but yeah it, it, and I've almost on a certain level I've had this conversation with Ethan a bunch of times too it's like on a certain level I've envied that to a degree because it's like you know it's such a huge blessing and such a awesome fucking thing right like you got this person it's like half you half another person and you're responsible for it and it's like so now you have a reason to live a reason to function a reason to stay upright a reason to keep moving forward and like sometimes you do lose that if you're just toiling away for your own survival or whatever self-gratification yeah, you, you know you know one thing about like kids like dads i see it all the time and i don't have facebook or instagram anymore but i'll see like a new like a, a dad take like a selfie with a kid Did right talk about this a little bit about about kids being exploited it, and shit yeah and and it's just really it's like dude well you worry about could you imagine if your dad like put out like a vanity shot of himself and you're in the background not knowing what's going on you know what's weird about that 
Thank God we're good this time. You know what? I worry about that. I don't worry about it, but I think about that on some level because, you know, my dad is a pretty active Facebook guy because boomers love fucking Facebook. So, you know, he's on there a lot and he posts a lot of shit, but I think that, I don't know, because we have a lot of like... Well, your dad has like an aura. It's not like he's yeah. being it, like... Exp- he's just... Your dad. He's I think older. that we would have had the privacy, but I, I do. I mean, there might be an innocence to it too, where they might not necessarily. They might just be so happy and so proud, right? Like yeah. they might not be thinking like, "Well, if I put my kid in, I'll get more likes because it's my kid." They might be thinking like, "I fucking love this kid so much that I just want to show the world." Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, I will give them but the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, yeah, I think you can. People. I mean, that's how I feel. Like, it's Dude, my dad got. My mom kicked my dad off Facebook. Really? Yeah, because That's funny. dude, he would get drunk and post oh no, like all caps. But like, I don't know if he thought he was sending a message. He may have. But he'd post his like status, like this Ozzy song rocks. Fuck you or something. So he just didn't really it was know. All caps, and my mom eventually told him to get. You got to get off. Because any chick good for thing. her, man. Yeah. Good for good for her for like stepping in. Yeah, like any instead chick. of letting him fucking cringe out and just like she embarrass himself. Him, yeah, that's what you hope but for. But he didn't know how to work it. It's not like he's ever. No, it's not his fault. Like that's the thing. Like if I, I mean, we love to fools watch, right? Yeah. And that's something that we've always done, even before the Red Bar days of 2020. We always oh, yeah. we fools watch. We didn't know what to call it yet, but we did fools watch, and we always made fun of people who embarrass themselves and cringe out on a major level. And what you always hoped, at least what I always hoped, was that if I ever did shit like that, that someone, whether it was a friend, family, or fucking anyone else, would fucking step in and say, "Dude, we're all fucking." you look like an ass we're all fucking laughing at you yeah. you gotta fucking stop yeah. so good for good for her for fucking drawing the line in the sand because that shows that it was getting in embar- I, I was on too and he'd comment on my stuff and it like just ruin right but he's it's not like it was you, like, you can't get mad at it yeah, i mean I it's like you don't even him, and you give him a level of like forgiveness that you wouldn't give anybody else because it's like you know he means well yeah it's a weird thing dude because mixing electronics and social networks with like different generations like we have different expectations of what people do on social media than our parents do like they think other shit is acceptable than we think is acceptable than the level below us thinks we're much more vague too right like you know, my dad posted a status one time on facebook it said check your oil mikey but it was a status. And it was like meant for you. Yeah, but it was. Just but it was just a status, status update, right? So and he I didn't. I saw it like two days later. I was like, dude, what the? Fuck? So he didn't necessarily understand what was going on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's fucking hilarious. Just and you just see the stat like you're not tagged in it. No, like it just zero you just likes. see. Ch- no, there's like one like, one uh, thumbs up. That's fucking hilarious. It, it, it there's there's a certain misery and. Uh, discomfort of like posting a status and getting z- nothing. I'll delete it. I, I haven't I had that happen in a while, it. but what I did do was when we uploaded the podcast last week, I posted the podcast on Facebook, which I didn't really think was going to lead to anything, but I just figured like, well, I might as well just throw it up there because who fucking knows, right? Anything could happen. Yeah. And I'm kind of, I don't want to say I'm known for doing podcasts or anything, but there's been a repeated history of like yeah, sometimes you, doing you, a podcast. But you've been in the game longer than... For sure. I've been rocking for a while. Yeah, so time. so like the I posted it and yeah, it just sat there on an island. It got nothing. The wind was blowing. Our podcast? Yeah, a fucking tumbleweed went Nobody by. Not it. a single. And it makes me wonder too. Like, of course, I try to make excuses for myself and rationalize. It's like, ah, I bet like posting a YouTube video, like it probably doesn't show up in the feed. And Would you click on one? No. Yeah, me either. So I get it. And it's one, It's one. that's the whole thing, right? That's it's why like, we got a clickbait. And, and another thing, I'm going to have to pee soon, but another thing about it is like, what we have to understand and what I never understood that I never got because I would always do podcasts and put them on my Facebook, put them on my Twitter, put them on my Instagram. The people that we know are not who this podcast is for. Right. They're not yeah. going to be for the moms that we know and the people we went to high school with and the people we worked with. Those aren't exactly the target fucking audience. The people that would listen to us are the people who are like actually like us and might enjoy our takes on certain things and therefore they're people that we don't know yet. 
So right. the key is to like pushing it to Facebook really doesn't do anything because those are all people that I know in real life and I know I them want for something one else. Fan. That we don't know. I want one. I know. Fan. I don't know if I've ever had that. Yeah, like a fan that's just like, hey, uh, send me some merch. I gotta, I gotta piss pee. again. Go pee. Go pee. Yeah. What a... I'm gonna just see where we're at. Yeah, yeah. Let me know the time, and I can I can give you 15 more minutes. I swear. Look at I'm texting on the podcast. Is that insane to you? I mean, after I pee, we can wrap it up if you want. It's up to you. Well, how long are we? I think we're doing a good... You can't tell. Well, if anybody made it this far anyways, that's pretty funny. Dude, I left uh, during the Alex Jones pod. I did not say anything about Alex Jones. Yeah, it was a great... You know, you have to keep your bit up. Dude, I'm going to remake a Facebook, I think, and do the all caps message posts. How funny would that be? Yeah, you should. Yeah, I'll just make a thing. And I'll it'll say like, "Hey Cody, you had a fun time today," but it'll be the it'll be the status. Yes, and don't <laughs> and tag me in it. Do not tag me yeah, in no, it. No, just no. put Cody. No, I'll tag like a like butler, I'll tag but it won't be you. It'll just be like <laughs> some other butler. Yeah. It'll say Cody A and then a tagged butler. That's funny. That's how it would go down too because it wouldn't be able to tag correctly. I want, I, you know, it'd be funny to do. Make people think, and this is, listen, my grandma had um, Alzheimer's. Oh, fuck. But what if I just got back on social media and like was posting shit that was like, Dude, Mike's like Mike's like has CTE. Yeah, like, like I think someone hit him in the head with a steel chair. Undertaker. Like never... Mike has been doing diving headbutts off the top rope, dude, because he has fucking CTE. <laughs> Holy shit! That's my gimmick. Did Mike play in the NFL? Because he's fucked <laughs> up, dude. Holy fuck balls! Yo, Mike put a post out about how he wants Jim Brady to be president. <laughs> And I don't even know Jim Brady. I don't even know who the fuck he's talking about, dude. He's losing it. It's all caps. You can get in, like, I can get in that mode and keep going. And it's too real, and I hate it, because eventually I get nervous, like, is this me now? Okay, so we like, got to talk about this. Face? We're over an hour right now, but we'll, we'll wrap it up on this. But I found this when I re-logged into Facebook, and you're kind of talking about that right now a little bit. Yeah. One of the funniest fucking things that we ever did was when we were at my practice space and we posed in front of the Bills van oh. and said, new, yo, Bills Mafia, we're going out all out this year, yeah, yeah. tailgating all day long, 24-7. We got the Bills Mafia van. We just purchased this bad boy. We put it on Facebook with that caption. There was no inkling of sarcasm. There was no inkling of joking. It I'm looked very big, legit. Buffalo. Like if you were like Jano or maybe like Bill or see, like you probably would have seen that and been like, oh, those fucking idiots. But for all the normies and people who just are friends with us, think that we're genuine people, think that we don't fuck around and we wouldn't want to put one over on them. So why would we do something like that? Oh. It just got so many likes and so many like comments i remember we were at lock 34 that night yeah and people were asking us about it yeah like yo yo nice you got van. that van dude that's sick oh. and i was just i don't even remember what, how i reacted to that i was just like you oh man i'm starting to tell the truth because and i ended up hiding the post because i was like this is getting out of control yeah like, you got called this out. is spiraling well we got called out but just, Yo, that's my buddy Trevor's band. Yeah, exactly. Or like something. The lie. They did an investigation on us and figured yeah, it's like, it out. It's not that big of a deal, guys. No, it's like that has always been. We're not driving it. No, it's not our van. We didn't it's buy a, a fucking van. van. Anyway. That logo looked awful. Like yeah. we wouldn't do that. It was painted barn red. It was terrible. The logo was like kind of like askew. Like it just what it wasn't proportionally yeah, right. I wouldn't buy that for ten bucks. No way. But I saw that post and I was like, man, this was really fucking it's still funny. still up, but you hit it. Yeah, it's still up. You can still find it. Maybe I can throw it in just so you guys can see it. But it's just like that level of like prank. I remember doing it at the Grand Chelly's house. I remember taking oh, yeah. pictures of you at the high school. Joe's mansion. And just like, yeah, I bought a house. Like I grind it. It's like, and I don't know. It. That's a weird ass humor style that really... 
a lot of people will not understand. People get mad about it too. Right, because it's like you're being deceptive. Yeah. But it's like, dude, you got to understand how fucking funny this is. Like to me, that's not even remotely believable. We like getting a rise out of people. It, it's just so stupid too. It's like Dude, I got dapped up so many times that night. Like, for the van? Like, yeah, and it's like, what's the fucking big deal? I didn't think it was a big <laughs> deal. People were coming up to me like, yo, saw that purchase. <laughs> and I'm like, what purchase? <laughs> They're like, oh, on Facebook. I'm like, oh, that's Shit. so funny. Well, my point was going to be actually because you were talking about running like a gimmick on Facebook and how it would carry. You really underestimate how shit really does spread. Like, you would think that, like, oh, I'm just posting it, like, well, a few people see it, whatever. But, like, no. Not only will people see it, but, like, people will talk about it. It'll slowly yeah. proliferate through the social circle. Like, it, shit spreads quick. So, if you do something outlandish like that where you look like you have CTE, it's going to seem like a goofy little stunt, college-style prank. But it's going to be... There's going to be people, you know, talking through the grapevine. Like, yo, I think Mike's really fucked up. He's fucking posting yeah. all this crazy shit. And there's going to be people worried about you and shit. Like, it really is going to spread. I've seen it happen. I've seen I it almost, happen multiple I times. I want to try, but I, I don't want, like, I'd have to let people in my family know that it's a bad. Right. You don't want any genuine concern. Right. But it'd be funny, like, to just think about someone being like, yo, like, Mike Kaminsky's been post. He picked, posted a picture of the bushes and he, said, "Happy Friday." He's been doing some wild shit on there, dude. Yeah. And then there would be like screenshots of it that like people are sending in their group chat. Yeah, like they'd be fools watching you, but I don't. But you'd be yeah. fools, yeah, posing on them. It's that that's kind of hard to pull off. But if you're Very. off social media for a while and you come back, you could convince a hundred percent. Yeah. Like Instagram would be tough to do. That's what I mean because these people aren't tuned in to your every move where they know that you would even fuck around on that level. So if you start doing something fucking wacky, they're just going to think you're fucking wacky. Yeah, and you can marinate them. Absolutely. Way. You can fucking reel them in, you know? Yeah, I like it. So we'll see. Maybe we got a little prank cooking up. Maybe next week we'll we'll Mike give Kamarski. you an update on that. Shout but out Big White. To wrap up, I think, uh, sorry for any depression vibes <laughs> that were sent out. Yeah. This um, was definitely a different vibe. Yeah, it was a, it was a big <laughs> transitional life-altering event, and I'm still wrapping my mind around it now. Like, I finally forgot about it for about 40 minutes right there when we were talking. But Taking a picture of you guys. Now I have to re-enter the reality of what's going on. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, thanks for tuning in. I think we got the video cooking this time. I think everything worked out. And I don't know. You got anything else you want to add in for the um, the final countdown? Probably not, right? I think I touched on everything. Fair enough. Hold on. <laughs> nice. Now I've touched on A little everything. sight gag. So, yeah, thanks for tuning in. If you did, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching the show. Obviously, of course, goes without saying. And we're going to keep bringing it to you. We're going to wrap up these final four or five weeks here at Spruce Street um, and send them out in style. And, yeah, stay tuned. We'll be back with more. As soon as we collect this off, we're going to be like, yo, why did you say that? Like, 100%. Happened? The real podcast, the real juicy shit is going to be the post show that no one hears. Yeah, and we have a club. You can subscribe to it to see the post. <laughs> yeah, the exclusive VIP, $15 a month, post and you'll get show. all the official juicy nonsense. And merch. Yep. We went to Sunny's last week. You'll get all that footage. Yes. Oh, we didn't even talk about my eye. Oh, yeah. Okay, so long. No, I feel like I already clocked out of work. I know. It, so we can't. But Next it, week. No, it. next week. I don't want to. Oh, it's a huge story. It's a cliffhanger. <sighs> yeah, next week. We'll explain what happened to my fucking eyeballs. I had to go to the emergency room. So it's a good story on the way. And we'll bring it to you next week. This is the Twin Towers Podcast. I'm Codeezy. It's Mikey Blaze. Give him a little sign off. Drink blue. It's healthy for you. Drink blue. Screw you. And we'll be back next week. Thank you. Bye. Adios. Bye. Bye. See you guys. <laughs>